Okay, what's up? <clears throat> Excuse me. What's up, YouTube? This is Joey Anderson from the Weave in the Void. Um, taking another look at the point and click adventure game built in Unreal 4. I think this is episode 9. So today we're going to take a look at um, setting up quests um, within the toolkit. Um, so to start off with, I'll just run through this quick quest that I set up and show you how it works in the game and then we'll look at how we build it <clears throat> so for now we're gonna have the character pick up a book that adds it to the inventory and we'll do more fun stuff with that later i'm actually going to have this quest start when i finish another quest but for testing purposes i have it starting when we pick up this book So we'll go, um, basically what this book is doing is telling the sheriff that something happens. So found this book, we talked to him, he says, how's it going? I found this book in the road, back with the tavern. Ah, yes. Take this back and see if he has anything new for me to read. Okay, still have the book, right? Actually. Let's see what happens if we talk to him right now, again, before we leave, and we're walking really slow. I know so much lore. Oh, well, that's interesting. He gave us a different dialogue. He's talking about lore now. But if we talk to him again, what happens? Oh, okay, it's still lore. Okay. But earlier, we were telling him about a book that we found, right? Okay, cool. It's working so far. Go back. He told us to go talk to Rupert Longshanks at the bookstore. So let's go to the bookstore. Ah, there's Rupert. Let's talk to him. Sheriff Otterman asked me to return this book for him and see if he had anything new he could read. Okay. So it got rid of the other book, and it gave us this new book called Modern Law for Dummies. A simple book which contains more pictures than words. It seems to be a law book intended for the young or naive readers. Huh. <laughs> it's kind of funny that the sheriff would need that book, but it is what it is. Take it back. Run over there and don't mind the funny animations you have going on. There's, we're not worried about that <coughs> at the moment. We're looking at questing. What's this then? Brought you a book, Sheriff. You said you, said you wanted something new to read. Well, indeed. Here's a gold coin for your trouble. So he's gonna take the book and give us a coin? Indeed. And if we talk to him again, should default to, I know so much lore. Perfect. So that was an entire quest loop. And we're going to take a look at how we did that. So to start with, like I said, we're, we would have this um, finishing uh, or starting a new quest when we finish a quest from another NPC. But just since we're jumping in the middle here, I have it happening when we pick up this book. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at, this is a good point to talk about items. So if you remember um, mentioning previously that the scene manager is what houses, this is the brain of the game, right, within the toolkit. So here we have an items table. We've already talked about inspection and dialogue tables, and now we have an items table, which we've had, but we just never talked about it. So we have an items table that houses all of the items within our game so if you add something in here you can give it inventory dialogue inspection dialogue you know this is all of the th things within your game okay so it's very important that you have an items table okay upon that then you can also create physical items in the world that correspond with the items in the table okay you need the table 
for blueprints, you need the static meshes for visuals. And the way that you create those is you come to blueprint class and you go to interactable object, boom, right? Okay. And that's talked about in the source material, how to create items. So we have an item. My point was with mentioning the source material, if you go to the documentation, it is covered how to create items. Plus I just gave you a quick example of how. So we open this up, right? And this is test book. Okay, so if you go to functions and you click override, here's all the things that you can do within the blueprints in this toolkit. So on this one, we want it on pickup. So when we pick the book up, something's going to happen. Okay, so we pick up and we're going to add state string to scene. Okay, so here's where you put the scene name. If the item that you're picking up or the dialogue that you're having or whatever is happening is in within the same scene you leave this blank and you can add this string now all this is doing is a title you can call this whatever you want we are going to reference this later this changes the state of the game basically um, and this is just to make the item go away once we pick it up that's all this is so but this is the important one so we pick it up it changes the state of the game, right? Perfect. Then what we can do with that is we go to, well, I thought I had him pulled up, but he's not pulled up, um, right? Then we go and we talk to the sheriff. So let's open this. I did have him open. Okay, now we're going to reference that. Remember we talked about this talk to tab? When we talk to him and we set up this camera and everything that happened. Okay, well now we have, as you see, a small quest loop put in here. Okay, so we're going to add a branch and we're going to put a condition upon that branch. So if you remember, we picked up the book. We told it to change the state of scene to sheriff book quest. So that's what we're doing here. We're, we're telling this branch to look for that. Is that true? Is it? Is the state of the scene this? Yes. Well, then this is going to happen. If it's not, then it goes down and it follows the false. And that's why, if it keeps following the false, we get Sheriff Lore. That's why it kept popping up, I know so much lore, because that's just the placeholder dialogue at the moment. Okay. So, Sheriff Book Quest, condition, valid state, scene, or valid scene state. Then we can call up in a completely new dialogue that is only valid if this scene state is in place. So then that calls up the Sheriff Book Quest dialog. Let's go ahead and open that. So here you go. Sheriff Book Quest. And you can set that up. We talked about setting up these different dialogues in the last video. When you're done and you want to continue the quest, when your dialogue is all done and it wraps up that portion, so, okay, we went, we picked up the book, we went and told the sheriff we found the book, he told us he had lost the book and he wants us to go back to uh, the bookstore and get a different book and take the one that we found back for him, right? So when that dialogue is all done, you come down here, see, so if he has anything new I could read. We come down here to on completion, return to speaking, we add an element, and we're going to call this Sheriff Book. And you can call it whatever you want, but just you have to remember this because we're going to reference this now. That's where for functions override, that gives you all your options, what you can call upon. We want to on return dialog. And we're going to set up a switch on string here, right? And here's where we reference it, Sheriff Book. So now when that is referenced in the dialogue, we can tell it what we want to happen. So here's what we want to happen. We want to change the state of the game in the scene of the bookstore. Not the scene that we're in, the bookstore. So that's where we put the bookstore or whatever your other scene's name is. 
here. And that's the, you're referencing there, you're referencing your, uh, your maps, your map name, your level name. So bookstore, okay? Okay, we also want it to remove the scene state that we told it to change when we picked up the book. Because we've already done that. We talked to him, we told him we found the book that he lost. So now if we ever talk to him again, we want that to go away. Because if you look here, Sheriff Book Quest, and he gives us this dialogue, right? Well, we don't want that to happen again because we've already done it. So we need to remove that state string from the scene. And we leave it blank because it's in the same scene that we're in now. Okay? Return to dialog. Okay, so we, we changed the bookstore state, right? So now we can go and we can go to the bookstore NPC. And we can add all the way down here at the end of the talk to... Sheriff book quest. Same condition just like we did for the sheriff. And these are all the other quests that he has at the moment from the demo that I built. So we just put this at the bottom. And you always want your lore or your generic dialogue to be at the last false because if everything else has been completed, we always want, you know, you, you, unless you don't want your NPC to ever be talked to again, you know. If we talk to the NPC, we always want something to come up. So we have a default, I call it my lore dialog. It's always going to have this lore that you can talk to him about. Okay, so Sheriff Book Quest, because we told it to change it. Condition, start this dialog. Sheriff needs book, right? Because he told us he needs a new book. So then we can come over here, Sheriff needs book. And we have this dialog set up now, right? There again, at the very end, when we're all said and done, we want something to happen. So we're going to go to on complete settings, return to speaking, sheriff book return. Now, it's very important to note that these are tagged in correspondence to the NPC. Okay? And I don't know if I've talked about that before, but it only works. If you have it corresponding. So what I mean by that is, um, let's minimize all this. So this NPC, if we go over here and go to global interaction, gameplay tag is Sheriff Otterman. Okay, and then when we reference him in the dialogue, so who's speaking? Oh, well, it doesn't have a name at the moment, but. Sheriff Otterman is speaking. This is how the engine knows what's going on. So if you edit this tag to be Sheriff Otterman, that's what's going on. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Anyways, where was I? Do 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 Rupert. Okay. So we told it to there again on return dialogue we want something to happen. These are all the other things we said sheriff book return. So now we're going to go all the way down here and we want it to, what do we want it to do? Well, we want it to remove that state string from the scene because once again, we've already completed it. We don't ever want to talk to him about the sheriff book ever again. So we remove that state from the scene. We also are going to add a just like we did when we talked to the sheriff when we changed the scene in the bookstore or the string in the bookstore we're going to change the state string in the starter town and we're going to say starter town and we'll call it book return we also want him to take the book that we brought back and we also want him to give us a new book okay and these are referencing the items table which we talked about so like if we go to generic book, there's that is. So we want it to take that away and we want him to give us the sheriff book, wherever that is. It's in here somewhere, right there, sheriff book. So, 
So this is where you can set up your inspection text, your dialogue, you can set up your name, all that good stuff. Okay. So told it to do that. Now we're going back to the sheriff. So now when we come back to the sheriff to talk to him again, well, we've already removed this state earlier when we completed it. So it's going to go down the line and it's going to see, oh, wait, now it's been changed to book return. So now this happens, right? Start the dialogue, book return quest. So then we go to return book quest. And we have this conversation with him. And there again, at the very end, we have on completion, return to speaking, book return. And we could take a look at that. So book return, we've called it in the dialogue. <clears throat> now we tell it what to do. Well, we want it to remove that state string from the scene again because we want it to go back to the default of the lore. We also want him to take the book that we went and got for him. And he said he would give us some coins. So we have him give us some coins. And that's that. So that's how you set up your system and it can get very complicated let's go ahead and take a look at um, NPCs let's look at this one for instance the barkeep so this is his mother and if you zoom out you can tell she's got a lot going on because this is where you start right and another example and so like you can do all sorts of cool things you can you can set it up to have look for conditions you know, does he have an item in his inventory? Okay, well, does he? Okay, well, and this is the player character here. Well, if he has a mug, well, then we're going to do this dialogue. If he doesn't have a mug, mug, excuse me, we're going to go down to here. So that's another way you can do things with quests, is having items spawn and despawn. And so if he has an item, we pull up quests. If he doesn't have an item, we don't pull up quests. Um, there's, there's multiple ways to do it. Um, I like doing it, I like changing the state of the game, just because then you can also, you, you can only have one state of the game going at once in each scene. You can have multiple scenes that have different states, but in the scene you can only have one state going on at once. So if you change the state of the, the scene, you can also do inventory um, or uh, item conditions. So you can have multiple things going on within the same scene without having any issues, if that makes sense. So yeah, kind of a lot that we covered. Um, most of this stuff can be copied um, if you don't want to, you know, manually type it all out. Um, you can take a look at his demo in the toolkit and go talk to the uh, shopkeeper and you can heat, you know, there's more examples in there of this. Um, this is just the way I have things set up. There's different ways to do it. Um, I like keeping it broke up individually like this just because it's a simple duplicate, duplicate, duplicate for me. That's just how I like to do it. Um, there, here's another example of on your return dialogue. How complicated you can get with things. Um, yeah. So uh, thanks for following along. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment and I'll try to answer them. Uh, and yeah, check the links in the bottom. Uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff going on, getting towards the end of the year. Um, obviously, haven't made the progress we were looking f to on this game, but um, do this in our spare time. So, you know, it is what it is. We're, we're chugging along now that we've got more quests going in. Um, be doing some more environmental stuff and uh, yeah follow along and um, we'll do another episode for too long hopefully covering more stuff uh, thanks for following